Mitch Tischler, Beltway Football Podcast with us here on the Hoffman Show. So that's that's the good trenches, uh, Mitch. Let's talk about the bad trenches, and then we can finish on a high note. We can save our Jaden Daniels dessert for the end, if you will. Uh, what, like, how worried are you about what is going on up front with the commander's defense right now? Because I think it's inarguable that they are not playing well in the trenches defensively how big of an issue it is and how worried we are. That's where the debate comes in. That's where the conversation comes in. So how worried are you about the the play up front of that defensive line? Extremely, because I I am fearful that this is going to turn from a, uh, a, a scheme uh, issue to an attitude issue. You know, Craig, finish this sentence for me. Before the season, if we said John Allen and Deron Payne through three games, have five and a half blank, what would your answer have been? Uh, you probably would go be looking for sacks there. I do believe that is their tackles number, though. Correct. And, you know, they're the highest paid defensive tackle duo in the NFL. They're the second and third highest paid players, you know, on this roster. It's, it's a problem, and I think it's a major problem. And, you know, last week you had Joe Wood Jr. talk about kind of the players that are playing his style, and I think it was just as interesting who he didn't talk about. He mentioned, uh, he mentioned Bobby Wagner, Frankie Lubu, Quan Martin, that group didn't mention any of the guys up front. And then I think secondly, you know, Dan uh, Quinn is doing this, you know, rotating captain uh, bit for each game. And you haven't had any of the defensive linemen be there, but you better believe that John Allen is the guy in the middle of the field before the game, trying to hype up these players. There's a little bit of a disconnect happening here. And, You've got to be very concerned about what's happening. You know, part of it is certainly the scheme and how Joe Witt uses those guys. Certainly early on and down, you know, they want those deep tackles to kind of eat up tackle, eat up uh, blockers so you can get the linebackers to run free. But we started to see it in last night's game a little bit where you had uh, John Allen, Deron Payne, and Johnny Newton all on the field at the same time, and they were moving Allen to the outside a little bit and, and kind of trying to find those guys in different matchups and they still weren't really able to get to the quarterback. And obviously Burrow is, you know, extremely good at what he does and getting rid of the ball and moving around in the pocket. But, you know, those guys are getting gashed up the middle uh, in the run game uh, as well on a pretty regular basis. I mean, the, the, the Bengals ran for six-plus yards per carry, and, you know, a lot of that was in between the tackles. And it just can't happen for uh, a defense that, you know, it needs to get just a couple stops to make a to make a 38-33 game look more like a 38-20 game, and you feel you know the opposite of the way you felt week one against the Bucks here. So, if I'm going to play uh, contrarian slash optimist, there are some plays to be made, right? Like Payne has Chase Brown in the backfield for a loss of six last night, and they just can't finish the play. Dante Fowler has a couple that he needs to finish. You've also faced two offenses, I would say, that are pretty good uh, in in Cincinnati, obviously, last night, and Tampa in week one. Do you buy into any of those arguments that perhaps it's it's getting closer, it's coming along, eventually they'll finish? Or are we far enough down the pipe with this defense three games in slash these players and Allen and Payne that we've seen over the last couple of years seemingly deteriorate in front of our eyes that there there is no spinning this? I think if you're spinning it, you're putting on some Ashburn colored glasses and <laughs> hoping that it turns and not, not really seeing what's happening, you know, on the field. There are plays to be made. And in week one, uh, Deron Payne, I think, had five pressures of, of Baker Mayfield. Has, has only had, I think, one pressure of the quarterback since then. And, you know, Baker is semi-elusive, I would say. Daniel Jones obviously can use his legs pretty well. Joe Burrow isn't really elusive. I mean, he moves around in the pocket decently, but when he takes a three, three or five or seven step drop, he's not, he's not, you know, he's not clearing the pocket and, and throwing the ball downfield. And it's not even that they're not getting stats, which is an issue in and of itself. They're not moving the quarterbacks off of their spot. They're letting them sit back there and, and find a, find somebody open. And, you know, the secondary has its own issues and aren't very good themselves, but the combination of having, D line that can't get to the quarterback and secondary that has issues is, is a problem. And, you know, I, I mentioned earlier, Joe, we're talking about wanting to, you know, rush together and, and find, you know, have the front end and back end work together. All the things we've heard for years about, you know, bad Washington defenses, but 
one of the issues I, I, I kind of have with what Joe was calling or how the they're being taught is, you know, they're bringing blitzes, not necessarily zero blitzes, but they're bringing blitzes and your corners are playing 10 yards off the receivers. And that's just easy money for any, you know, mediocre NFL quarterback to throw a five yard out and, you know, get into a better down distance there. And of course you're trying to protect from getting beat over the top. And I think a lot of yesterday's defense was bed not break, but at some point, you know, you got to find a way to move the quarterback off his spot and, and not let him sit there and just pick you apart, uh, you know, from the pocket. My my only response to that, Mitch, would be, yes, but how? Um, and th- this is the thing that I struggle with is I watch it back. And, you know, it's something I, I obviously I'll talk about with Logan and, and trying to lean into his experience of uh, 10 years playing in the league to see what ideas he has. But I give Joe credit that they're – he's trying stuff like they're, they're blitzing. They're moving different guys around They're They're doing all the things seemingly that you'd want a defensive coordinator to do to try to generate pressure. And none of it seems to be working. And so I guess the, I, I don't know if you have any grand ideas and it might just be eventually one of these things has to work and they have to execute better. But do you, is there anything that they're not doing or at least trying that you wish they were because you're obviously correct that eventually they need to generate some pressure because the, the lack of it so far this year is, is like stunningly appalling. Yeah. I mean, they gave up 450 yards to, uh, to, uh, to the Bengals, you know, offense on, on, on Monday night, which isn't good. I, I think what we saw yesterday might be a little bit of the game plan going forward. I mean, obviously you hope you can get a couple more stops than what they did, but you know, uh, What's his name? Uh, Jeremy Chin, early on in that game, had two nice plays on on second and third down to force the missed field goal. To miss the field, to force the field goal attempt that they ultimately missed. I, I think they're going to be playing this, you know, kind of bend don't break style. And as long as the offense, you know, coaches love talking about complementary football. As long as the offense, I, I, it, the pace they're on right now isn't realistically sustainable. You know, they're gonna they're gonna come back to earth a little bit, but. If the offense is going to be as dominant as it is, then, you know, this might just be the way the defense is. Give them, you know, three, five, seven yards a pop. You know, don't get stuck in those, you know, one-on-one situations with one of the top three receivers in the NFL, giving Burrow an easy throw to, to just, you know, throw it up there for Chase when he's one-on-one with any defender. Um, it, it might just be, hey, we're going to give up a lot of yards, but we're going to make teams earn their points, and we're going to make them, you know, get first downs and, and, you know, keep the ball in, in positive down and distance to be able to keep this thing going. It's that's just as much as the offense uh, operating the way that it is now, it's unsustainable. A defense giving up this many yards isn't sustainable either, because if you had told the Bengals that they weren't going to punt the entire game, the only possession they didn't score on was going to be a missed field goal that, you know, Jamar Chase was going to go for, for a buck 20 and Burrow was going to throw, you know, for 325, they would have told you that they were going to win that game by a three touchdown. And I think most NFL teams <laughs> would feel that way. But Jane Daniels was just that good that, that it didn't happen. It's going to be interesting because Kyler can, can carve them up just like anybody else. And Marvin Harrison Jr. is a, a, you know, a, a, a young player that's getting better week by week. That, uh, that Cardinals team can, can force some points too. So we might be in for another barn burner on Sunday. This is the Hoffman Show on the Team 980 and the Odyssey app.